Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Two teenagers are fighting for their lives right now after a shooting last night in Ypsilanti Township left four people with gunshot wounds. Police told us early this morning that a 19 year old and a 20 year old died from their injuries. Police are still looking into what exactly happened and why shots were fired. Let's get to Will Jones. He is live at the crime scene and Will, all of the victims were inside the same car. And Karen, neighbors keep saying that this is so sad. Investigators here are on scene. They returned to the scene this morning. They've been talking with people in the community, taking pictures of this parking lot on George Place, where this all unfolded this morning, or last night, I should say. Investigators say, as you mentioned, someone fired shots inside a car. Four people were inside that car. The car crashed while leaving the scene. All four were taken to a hospital. Two people later died from their injuries, ages 19 and 20. A 14-year-old and 16-year-old remain in the hospital. They are expected to survive. Police are searching for the person or people who fired the shots. Right now, no information on who police are looking for or what leads they're following up on at this hour. I spoke with a neighbor this morning off camera who was looking at the damage to her car. She was very upset about what unfolded here in our community. Again, so many questions. Police are still searching for the people or the person responsible. Live in Ypsilanti Township, Will Jones, Local 4. All right, thank you, Will. Appreciate it. Take a look. This man accused of assaulting a teen and hurling racial slurs at him. Police say 20-year-old Moez Irfan from Livonia bumped into a 13-year-old at the Kursky Recreation Center and then hit the teen multiple times in the head. Officers subdued Irfan and then took him to the hospital for a psychiatric evaluation. He's charged with assault, ethnic intimidation, and resisting police. He's due back in court on Thursday. We'll have more on the case tonight when you join us on Local 4 News at 6. For the first time in 11 years, home prices have posted their first annual decrease. A National Consumer Index found that prices dropped 0.2% from April 2020, 2022 to April 2023. Even with that milestone being reached, home prices are still higher than average. Experts say low inventory is keeping demand high, allowing for sellers to keep their prices up. Interest rates have also played a factor. All right, let's turn our attention to the weather now. After rain for those fireworks last night, rain showers and more hazing conditions are sticking around today. Not to mention that air quality in Detroit is one of the worst in the world right now. Forewarned meteorologist Brian Sherman is here with the very latest. Hey, Brian. Hey there, Karen. Good, uh, good Tuesday afternoon, everyone. That's absolutely right. According to IQ Air, Detroit has the fifth worst air quality in the world. And just in within the past five minutes, our air quality alert has now been extended through midnight, Wednesday night into Thursday morning just because we are going to keep pictures like this going all the way through tomorrow night. Tower Cam and Southfield, we cannot even see the downtown skyline just because of all the haze thanks to the smoke from those Canadian wildfires. 65 right now here in Detroit, 63 working into Ann Arbor, 64 working into Lapeer, and 65 right now checking in with us down in Monroe. We have kept some cloud cover around, but the good news, the majority of the rain showers now pushing off to the east over in Canada, so I am looking for maybe a spotty shower, but a few breaks in some of the clouds heading into this afternoon. Still optimistic that temperatures will head for the mid 70s by the time we get to late this afternoon and into early this evening. While air quality will impact us today and tomorrow, we are looking at the possibility of thunderstorms by the end of the week. We may be seeing another round of a few stronger thunderstorms by Thursday as well. I'll break down what you can expect in your complete 4-1 forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Brian. Cleaning up is still happening in so many communities this afternoon. Days after those violent storms Sunday evening, plenty still without power. Right now, DTE says 21,000 customers are still in the dark. That's definitely an improvement. For comparison, that number was around 55,000 yesterday at 5. DTE says it has brought an additional crews from outside our area to help complete those repairs. We are learning more today about a Sunday incident in Macomb County involving a pedestrian and two vehicles. The 44-year-old male pedestrian from Roseville was initially struck by a Chevy Chevy Silverado on southbound Gratiot. The driver immediately called 911 as the victim laid on the ground. The driver then reported that a second vehicle, a Ford Taurus, struck the pedestrian as well. Both drivers remained at the scene and then did cooperate with the investigation. The pedestrian was pronounced deceased at that scene. Brian Koberger, the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students, 
uh, seven months ago, is expected to appear in court for a pretrial hearing today. Now, he is facing four counts of first degree murder, and now prosecutors say they plan to seek the death penalty. Aaron McLaughlin is following this story for us. In an NBC News exclusive, the father of victim Kaylee Gonsalves reacting to news that prosecutors plan to seek the death penalty against Brian Koberger, the man accused of murdering his daughter and three other students at the University of Idaho. Sense of relief. I'm glad that we're in a situation of, of strength and uh, the evidence is there and we feel that we can, you know, they can go forward with this. The family's attorney believes it's a clear-cut death penalty case. If you're not going to pursue the guy for a death penalty on a case like this, who are you going to pursue for a death penalty? In just a few hours, Koberger is set to return to a Moscow, Idaho courtroom for another pretrial hearing. His legal team is requesting records from last month's grand jury indictment of their client and are asking the judge to pause legal proceedings until they receive those materials. Already a key part of the case for both sides, Koberger's DNA and where it was and wasn't found. While prosecutors said in a court filing earlier this month that Koberger's DNA is a statistical match to DNA found on a knife sheath at the scene of the murders, his lawyers say authorities did not find any victim DNA in his apartment, office, home or vehicle. Is this your car? He's had over a month before those search warrants were executed after the crime to throw away his clothes, wash his clothes, wash his car clean out his apartment. There's multiple ways to explain the lack of DNA in his vehicle, in his apartment. There's not a lot of ways to explain his DNA on the sheath of the murder weapon. The legal battle is also unfolding just over a mile from the scene of the quadruple homicides. The off-campus home where Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were killed was set to be demolished before a judge ruled it should be preserved. Now the University of Idaho says they hope to have the house down ahead of the new school year. The Gonzalez family says the house should be preserved through trial. I don't want to sit six months from now and hear somebody in the court case say, well, I really wish we could be in the house right now. Once the case is over, then they can move on. But right now, it's the crime scene. Koberger has denied any wrongdoing. He is due back in court for another hearing later today.